Hey child, you are unknown. You live in the shadow of Pu'er. What was the next bit? Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about dark tea. What is dark tea? Is it black tea? Is it Pu'er? We're going to get into that today, but we're also going to talk about how to brew it, and we're going to talk about that first because I'm going to need something to drink. All right, so let's get started. I am thirsty. What are we going to need to brew dark tea? Well, we're starting with Gung Fu style, so you'll need a gaiwan, a sharing pot. A filter is a really good thing to have with dark tea. The leaves aren't as tender as something like a green tea and they're not very tasty, so I don't like to have them in my teeth. You can always filter with your teeth if you want, but I'm going to use a filter today. You'll need a, your tasting cup and finally, of course, you'll need the tea. So I'm going to start as normal with a Gung Fu session by warming up my vessel. Just give it a nice little rinse out here. And this is a handy little step that warms up pretty much everybody in the process, including my filter, which I almost forgot. I don't really need to uh, filter the water, but I do just want to warm it up so that my, uh, my, my subsequent infusions aren't cooled by that cool porcelain filter. So now everything's getting warmed up nicely, including my cup. And we'll give the baby a little bath. Ta-da! So like any Gong Fu session, this is a great time this is a great time to uh, enjoy the aroma of the dry leaf in the warmed up guy one. So let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a look at that, or a smell of it. Pretty subdued. Little hints of maybe date, but we're gonna have to infuse it to get to the bottom of this. So let's get on with it. Again, with a dark tea, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start with a rinse. It's always, uh, with many teas, it's good to rinse, and dark tea, I definitely recommend it. So it occurred to me as I'm rinsing the tea that I haven't even told you what I'm brewing, and what we're brewing today is uh, Liu Bao Cha. There are all different varieties of dark tea out there available. Um, I chose Liu Bao Cha because it's one of my favorites, and that's what we're brewing today. So sorry for keeping you in the dark on that for so long. We'll give the baby his rinse water. And now it's time to brew the first infusion. And basically I use enough leaf to sort of fill up the bottom of the guy wand um, and just give me a nice liquor color. So here we go with our first infusion. Uh, that looks wonderful. And you can see the liquor color of Liu Bao Cha is this sort of Beautiful deep orange, almost pushing towards red. Uh, really pretty color. That is not going to be the color for all dark tea, but that is the color we're looking for for Liu Bao Cha. So, what makes a dark tea a dark tea? Ah, <sighs> sorry, just morning time. I'm kind of waking up. So what makes a dark tea a dark tea? Basically, like all of the different tea types, uh, the process is what makes each of them different. And what is it about dark tea that makes uh, its process unique is fundamentally one thing. It's fermentation. And it shouldn't be mistaken with oxidation, which is totally different. This is microbial fermentation. So every dark tea at some point in time undergoes some kind of fermentation process. And uh, some of them are quite short, some of them can be quite long, but they all have that unique step, and that gives each of them something unique about their flavor. Let's talk about the flavor of this Liu Bao Cha. Mm. Oh, first tea of the day is so wonderful. This is a sweet, sweet tea. It's got some elements of those date elements that I picked up on the uh, dry leaf are coming through. It's also piping hot, which I love. Uh, it's got some, uh, it's got a wonderful fragrance. Mm. Awesome. 
All right, infusion number two. Let's rock and roll. So I've been really just really intuitively timing these infusions. Your second infusion is pretty much going to be a flash infusion. So we'll get that out of there. Have a look at that nice deep orange, almost moving towards brown, the liquor color a little bit now. Orangey brown, a bit of redness. Mm. Nice. I don't know if you can see that. Um, liquor color looks good. Let's give that a taste. A little bit hot. It's a lot hot, actually. Mm. Oh, there's a little hint of bamboo coming off of that now, which is just divine. Mm. So Liu Bao Cha traditionally is aged in bamboo. So that's where that, that note is coming from. It's just wonderful. It still has that sweet date, great fragrance to this tea. This Liu Bao Cha and Liu Bao Cha traditionally comes from Guangxi province. Um, let's talk a little bit about where dark tea comes from because it's not just restricted to one province uh, like many of the categories. Dark tea is from all over China, uh, mostly focusing in the west. You've got uh, dark teas coming from Hunan province like Fujuan which is famous for its little gold flower uh, which is a really healthy little guy in the tea. Uh, Tianjin also comes from that province, is one of my other favorite, uh, especially morning dark teas. Shupuar comes from Yunnan, so really kind of all over, focused somewhat on the west of China, as I mentioned. That's mainly because of the history of China, and they were making these teas traditionally for export to people who were in the west, so it didn't make sense to make them in the Far East and drag them all the way across China. Ah, oh, wonderful. All right. So third infusion, let's rock and roll. So I've mentioned a little bit about the flavor profile of this Liu Bao Cha, but what can you expect from dark tea in general uh, as a category in terms of flavor profile? Well, it's, uh, as we mentioned earlier, they come from all over and they have uh, quite a bit of different amount of that fermentation time, which is the key step. So you can really expect a wide range of flavors, just like you can from many of the other tea categories. So all the way from sort of hay and mushroomy that's typical in a Tianliang Cha uh, over to more of Tianjin which can have smoke, very bold morning tea-like elements. Uh, you've got your Shu Puars which are bringing leather and uh, wet earth kind of style. This Liu Bao Cha has hints of bamboo and sweet date. I mean we're talking all kinds of experiences but it's but again in its because it's its own category and it uses that fermentation step, it's something you really have to experience because they're, they're all their own. It's not the same as a, the date flavor you might get or the sweetness you might get from a black tea. It's not like that. You've got to try it. It's just something extraordinary. In fact, we tasted a couple of, uh, a couple of different uh, dark teas in a recent Talking Tea podcast episode that we did with our friend Ken Cohen. Um, so uh, we'll put the link to that down below and you should definitely check it out. Talking Tea is a podcast about tea and tea culture and it covers tea from all over the globe and from so many different aspects. You can listen to it on your way to work, you can listen to it while you're going about your work day. And Ken is one of our many tea friends we've met along the way. Very well read, and knowledgeable yet humble, always inspiring to talk to and I always learn something whenever I talk to him. And he brings that atmosphere to the Talking Tea podcast. I highly recommend you check it out. I got about eight good infusions out of this tea uh, and I could probably keep going if I wanted to with some really long infusions. However, I want to get on with brewing this in a teapot. What are we going to need? Well, obviously a teapot. And you can adapt this method to your uh, travel, your grab and go travel mug if that's what you got. But today I'm using this cute little glass teapot. You're going to need a tasting cup, 
and obviously you're going to need some tea. All right. So we'll get some tea into the teapot. And my teapot has a handy little strainer, uh, which is nice to have with dark tea. But it's optional if you don't have that. You can always sift with your teeth, as they say. I'm going to fill the pot right up. There we go. Pop the lid on. And now we're just going to wait for the liquor color to come to the right depth and tone that will indicate the tea is ready to drink. That looks about ready. Let's take a sip. All right. Mm. And that's how to brew Liao Bao Cha in a gaiwan and a teapot. And we also talked about dark tea in general. In specific, what makes dark tea dark tea, and also where in general they come from. If you're new to dark tea, I hope this inspires you to try out this great category and all it has to offer. And if you're already a dark tea lover, maybe you can find a new dark tea you've never tried before and give that a shot. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you'll be the first to know when we release a new video. Have you tried dark tea before? Do you have a favorite? Please leave a comment down below. We absolutely love hearing from you guys. And until next time, keep steeping. <laughs>this is the time where if you have friends you chat with them while the tea infuses but if you don't have friends you just sit here like this it's okay to drink your tea alone it's not like alcohol that's not okay why not? And you're an alcoholic huh? does the Lord count? Prompt, line, line, mm -hmm. line. Oh, oh. <laughs> line. That's what actors say when they forget their line. Oh. Line. Leo Bocha! <laughs> I don't know. How shall I finish? Do you want me to put a little finish clip? <laughs>